Hello, my little chickadees. Thanks for joining us this week at the Skunk Juice Studio. This week, we have a fun book read that is over 209 years old. So let's read Hansel and Gretel. Is this not fun? Oh, oh, let's see what happens to Hansel and Gretel, shall we, my little chickadees? <gasps> Once upon a time, on the edge of a great forest, there was a poor woodcutter who lived with his wife and two children, Hansel and Gretel. Now the woodcutter was a good man, but he had made a poor choice when he picked a wife. She was a cold, cruel woman who always insisted on having her way and she treated the two children very badly. Oh. So, but Hansel and Gretel were so good and so kind that they tried to love her anyway. Life was hard for the poor woodcutter's family and it grew harder every day. One year there was no rain and the woodcutter's crops all died. Uh, food became very scarce and one night Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents speaking. However you look at it, said the wife trying to keep her voice low, there is no other way out. But it's too cruel, cried the woodcutter wringing his hands. Do you want all four of us to die of hunger? They, she asked. We don't have a cent and nobody wants to buy your wood. You have to do what I say. Take the children into the woods and leave them there to care for themselves. Then the two of us can share the little food that we have left. And she left him with no peace until he agreed. When Gretel heard the terrible plan, she began to weep. Now it will be the end of us, she cried. Don't worry, whispered Hansel. I'll find a way to help us both. The next morning was bright and sunny. The mother woke both children up roughly out of bed lazy bones she yelled we're all going with your father into the woods get a move on the woodcutter left his home with a heavy heart hansel and gretel followed him and the woodcutter's wife came last as hansel walked along he dropped small pebbles which he had picked up beforehand he planned that he and Gretel could follow the pebbles to find their way back home that evening. Hansel tried to hide what he was doing, but his mother saw. Figuring out his plan, she kicked the little pebbles uh, away from the path. By mid-morning, the small group had reached a very leafy place where the branches of the trees were so thick that they hardly allowed any sunlight to pass through. By now, the woodcutter had tears in his eyes and could not speak. His wife looked at him scornfully and said to the children, stay here while we go to cut wood. You can eat this piece of bread or sleep for a while if you feel tired. Let's see, stay here. Let's see, you can eat the bread. We'll come back for you the early evening. We'll come back for you. She gave them each a piece of bread, and then she and her husband turned and left. Hansel and Gretel did not feel afraid as they watched their parents go. They were sure that they were going to be safe because of Hansel's plan. They ate their pieces of bread and waited. When dusk came, Gretel began to feel cold and worried. Don't you think we should start for home, she said to Hansel. These dark woods make me so afraid. 
the two children held hands and began looking for the pebbles. They searched and searched, but at last they realized that the pebbles had disappeared. What are we going to do now, sobbed Gretel. Walk until we find the way home, replied her brother. He tried to sound brave, but inside he was scared. The two children walked and walked until they could walk no more. After walking all night, lost deep in the woods, they dropped to the ground and huddled together to keep warm. Soon they were fast asleep. They slept for hours, each dreaming of a warm bed and delicious food. Late in the morning, Gretel was awakened by the sound of a little bird singing sweetly. Then Hansel awoke, and he too listened dreamily to the bird's song. When the bird had finished, it flaps its wings and flew off. The bird was so beautiful that the children followed it. The bird led Hansel and Gretel to the most marvelous little cottage they had ever seen. It was made entirely of sweets. Look, cried Hansel, the walls are made of cake and the roof is chocolate, added Gretel, whose mouth was already watering. But there was more to see. The window frames were made of candy, and the flowers were lollipops and candy canes, and the front door was a big slab of nougat with a frame of iced almonds. As you may guess, the children ran toward the marvelous little house. Hansel broke off a piece of the wall, but Gretel preferred a piece of the window frame. They ate and ate until suddenly they heard a voice coming from the inside of the cottage. Nibble, nibble, little mouse. Who's that nibbling at my house? Hmm. The door to the cottage creaked open and a very kind looking old lady poked her head out. As Hansel and Gretel tried to hide the sweets they had taken, the little old lady spoke gently to them. Poor little thing, she said. You must have gotten lost and you're hungry, no doubt. Come in, come in. There's no reason to be afraid of a harmless little old woman like me. Hansel and Gretel were so grateful for her kindness that they almost cried. They followed the woman into the cottage. Inside was a table set of donuts, honey, nuts, and a large jug of milk. Quickly, they sat down and started to eat. But when they had eaten their fill, the little old lady began to grin evilly. She was really a terrible witch who had stayed hidden in the woods and trapped children with her marvelous cottage. Before the children realized what was happening, the witch grabbed them and held on so tightly, neither could escape. Now I've got you, she crackled. She took Hansel, his face still smeared with milk and honey, and locked him in a large cage, which was hung from the ceiling. There, you'll stay until you're fat enough to make a good stew, the bad witch told him. And as for you, she said to Gretel, you will work for me, cleaning the house and cooking for your brother to fatten him up. Gretel had no choice but to obey since Hansel was in danger. Now the witch had very bad eyesight, so every day when she wanted to see how fat Hansel was becoming, she would tell him to stick his finger between the bars so she could feel it. Hansel, being a very clever little boy, figured this out and pushed a chicken bone between the bars for the witch to feel. That's strange, the old witch would say. The more you eat, the thinner you seem to be. And she would keep feeding, feeling the chicken bone greatly confused. Hmm. 
And in the meantime, Gretel tried to think of a way to free her brother. She cried in the nighttime, remembering her father and fearing for her brother's life. What could a little girl do against a powerful witch? One morning, the witch decided she could not wait any longer. She was going to eat Hansel no matter how thin he was. The witch prepared a great fire in the fireplace under the chimney. As the flames licked around the cauldron, she rubbed her hands in satisfaction. My mouth waters just thinking of how good the little boy will taste, she said. Then she ordered Gretel, bring me that jar of pepper. Gretel picked up the jar slowly. The witch was still looking at the flames with a wicked smile on her face. It was now or never, never decided Gretel. She had to save her brother. Gretel took the top off the jar of pepper and blew its contents as hard as she could into the witch's face. Achoo! sneezed the witch. So violent was the sneeze that the old witch fell back into the middle of the fire. She burned like a torch, screaming horribly. Greta rushed to the Hansel's cage and freed him. Then the brother and sister hugged each other, crying with relief. Before leaving the house, Hansel and Gretel filled their pockets with gold coins that the old witch kept in a chest. Then they ran out of the house as fast as their legs would carry them. By now, the witch was a pile of ashes. It took three days for Hansel and Gretel to get out of the woods. Some little birds, who were happy to free, be free of the witch too, guided them finally. The children found their home. Their father greeted them with great joy. He had sent his cruel wife away and had been looking high and low for the children. God has answered my prayers, he exclaimed. I am so sorry, my children. Even though we're hungry, we shall always be together. Hansel and Greta laughed and showed their father the gold coins. Never did they go hungry again. But what is more important, never again did they feel poor because love is the best of riches. The end. Wasn't that amazing? A fairy tale I even remember not 209 years ago, but it still goes today. Thanks for joining me this week for Hansel and Gretel. Okay, and we will see you next week. Remember, read, wash your hands. Read, wash your hands. Ooh. And what does the witch do? does not do but the good witch does sprinkle that kindness okay thanks guys for this unusual week see ya